More output or not more output? So the output is what is the proportion of output? What is bit that is what is the comparison between input and output? Any idea? Based on the output, sorry, based on the input, what is the output? More or less? More output, okay. Why? You understand my question? If output is more, why? We have been we have been discussing these things, right? I simply want you to tell me answers to these simpler questions so that I understand that you understand. Generation generative mechanism? Because generative mechanism inbuilt uh, within the hypothetical device, so then we may be able to formulate new words and communicate new, new ideas. So basically generative mechanism is the apparatus, is the capability capacity that is responsible for infinite output. Right? What does generative capacity do? What is it? What does it do in precise terms? We 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 got the idea about language acquisition device and universal grammar. We want to know what is it that generative mechanism precisely does. It adjusts the underlying patterns. Exactly. It helps us deduce the underlying patterns of language. That is underlying rules of language. If we are talking about words, then it gives us word, the underlying patterns behind words. For example, words will have sounds in a systematic way, in a particular way, which is the first thing that we see is we must have vowels in a word. Okay? We cannot ha have a word which means in other words that does not have vowel sounds. Get it? So, this underlying pattern, this rule gets clearer through development of this generative capacity which is what we mean by language learning. Okay? Therefore, language learning is not really learning of words and sentences. Words and sentences are outcome of the development of a particular type of capacity. Also, when we say language is innate to human being, that is language is inbuilt to human being, what we mean is the ability to develop this specific capacity is inbuilt. Output in a, in a sense is really trivial, by output we mean language, which is actually the outcome of this generative capacity is trivial, trivial quote and under and uh, quote in, in in quotes, you under, understand this this point because that outcome could be any language, which depends on immediate society. Right? I I think we have we have dealt with this thing uh, in a in a in a clear way. If if there are any confusions, if if there are any issues related to that, please let me know because some of the things that I am going to ask you or talk about are based on these, these based on the clarity of this capacity, clarity of understanding about this capacity, right? 
and again they are also very they are, they are also very simple point they are not not very complicated but complication keeps building if the previous one is not clear if the previous thing is clear then the next one follows from the previous one all right okay can you can can we go down this list of terms uh, and see if we are familiar with these things not not necessarily we have to go through this list again but i just want to clarify whether you have heard these terms and not only heard these terms we are very clear about them because these are these are going to be fundamentals of many things that we are going to be discussing and i have been telling you that we are building the basis for uh, a discussion as a more serious discussion at the level of sentences in terms of what are the fundamental principles of language what are more fundamental rules that operate in language okay what is that linguistic computation which works in human cognition how does that building takes place get it I think we have, I, I do not remember, but I think we have talked about this. When you, when you speak, right, uh, I am not sure if you watch yourself or others, but if you do or if you happen to do from now onwards, we have, we have talked about the smallest possible sentence, right, which was just a word. What was the word? Go or come or uh, go is better one because that that's even smaller in a word, right? As a word, so fine. What do you think will be a longer sentence? How long do you think a sentence could be? There is no limit. How? How does a sentence end? How do we know that now sentence is over? Anybody, any idea? When we speak or when we read or write, which one? No, 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 I am talking about spoken line. Stop, right? A full stop, right? How do we know where to put the full stop? That is, full stop is in written language, but in, in spoken language we stop, right? So, how do we know where to stop in, in order to understand that this sentence is over, right? So, a sentence is like go, a sentence is like go home, right? A sentence could be I am asking you to go home, right? A sentence could be this is a pointer, this is a room, this is a classroom, we are studying here, these are the sentences, right? How do we know? that the sentence is over at the point when I say this is a pointer, the sentence is over. Now what I say is going to be the next sentence, how do we know that? Any idea? The, the reason I am asking you this question is, this question, the answer to this question follows from our understanding of why go is a sentence? Okay. What makes go a sentence? It has a meaning. Everything has a meaning. When we say pointer, does it not have a meaning? Does it have a meaning or not? It has a meaning. Or everything could possibly have meaning. There is something else that makes the word, the, the utterance go a sentence. Work. So, what follows from that is every sentence requires one verb. You may have little bit more, you may have something else, we can call them call those things different things, but a sentence must have a verb. 
and when a verb is there in the sentence right and then the verb agrees with the subject then we know now it is going to be end of the sentence. The, the next question is how long a sentence could be? You said something about that? There is no limit. There is no limit. And, and uh, that is in a way true. There is sentence could be infinitely long. Is that, is that difficult to believe at this stage? So, can you give me an example of a long sentence? Or, or as long as it gets. So, you are you are right. It is not just about commas and uh, and uh, a sent you, you are right essentially what you are saying is right that a sentence could be infinitely long. You understand this, this, this part this could be a very tall claim that a sentence could be infinitely long. How is going to be determined and the actual answer to this how comes when we look at the when we look at actual linguistic computation in human cognition and we understand the underlying pattern which allows a sentence to be infinitely long. We can get an example right, we can get an example which will be let us say 10 sentences combined together, but then again it is 10, it does not tell you infinitely long. In fact, when we say infinitely long it is almost impossible to give an example of an infinitely long sentence. Get, get this point? We, we cannot possibly give an example of an infinitely long sentence, but we can possibly understand through the computation that underlying processes have accommodation for infinitely long sentence. That is what we will see, but for that these things are important. So, clear about them? Uh, language, linguistics, language and dialect, language learning or language acquisition, behaviorism, that is two different, two different ways of looking at how we understand, how we learn language, behaviorism and innate, innateness hypothesis, generative mechanism, language computation. Language computation is something that we have just talked about, we have not really looked at the total details. Language, if at all at this stage you can give an example of language computation at the level of words, we can say this, ru this rule is an example of language computation, that this is one rule which gives us which gives us words and this pattern can give us many, many words. Okay? We can have a different pattern, but this pattern where we have a cluster of two consonants in the beginning of a word results into very few, very few words and here when we say very few we mean compared to this one. Okay? So, number one gives a lot. We, we can go all the way to say infinite, but we do not want to say that, say that just a lot. This one radically reduced from this, that is way too low compared to the first one. Get this thing? And, and we will come to specific, more specific examples radically too low because of this constraint. All right? So, this could be an example of internal computation at this level, we will we'll talk about more soon. Again, when we look at the specifics of generative foundation of language acquisition, 
everything else that we have been discussing since yesterday and we just revised it in the beginning of uh, uh, this class today is part of generative foundation of language acquisition where language acquisition device, universal grammar, principles, parameters, knowledge of language and gen again generative capacity. These are the terms that we have been using to understand how learning takes place. So, these are these the, the reason why I am emphasizing on these terms and I want you to be fully familiar with these terms is because these are going to be like like normal vocabulary. Okay? And please pay attention to the last one generative capacity and generative mechanism there is an overlap between between the two, but still a little bit of clarity is required. Okay? Which is this is a mechanism and what when it gets internalized that that becomes capacity. Okay? All right. Knowledge of language just to quickly revise it anybody? Because this is this is not a simple phrase which means knowing about language. It means what does it mean? Okay, so let, let us first look at universal grammar just just to revise it once again to make sure that we understand this thing. Okay? Innate set of innate and abstract principles clear so set of innate and abstract principles that is those principles are already inbuilt. Okay? It only requires triggering through input from immediate environment and that is that is the inbuilt principle which is responsible for developing language in us. Okay? So, external factor input triggers and inbuilt principles get triggered and then we get language, then we get these things. This is what we mean by principles, principle part of universal grammar, parameters a, a set of rules that language is vary, uh, vary around, languages vary from one another. A set of rules that determines how languages vary from one another is part is, is what we know as parameter. Okay? And this is what I was asking you. It is important to, to know this, idea, this, this concept with clarity, which is knowledge of language is that uh, we know these things we know that this rule is responsible for lots of words and but and and we don't know all of those words because we know this one so what this results into is i know them but i just don't know that i know them everything about language is part of that and that is what we call that is what we call knowledge of language and why do we not know that we know them? Anybody? Why do we not know that we know them? You should be able to answer this question at this stage. Remember I am saying, I am talking about the rules of language or rules of language learning that we know, but we do not know that we know all those rules. Why so? Why do we not know what we know? It is it's kind of a problematic thing when we are saying we know, but we do not know that we know, right? Sounds very nice. Do not deliberately go and <coughs> learn the thing, so we do not know that we know this. Thing. That's so, it is the ability that comes and even the parts of ability, the what, what, see if, if ability is a mes machine, the components of this, that machine that mechanism is not really obvious, is not really obvious, they are set of abstract things, they just get triggered, we, we just we really do not know them as a, as a matter of list, understand? So, when we do something like we do 10 things in a day, 
So we are doing those things one after the other, right? Therefore, we know what are the things that we have done, what are the things that we have learnt, then we know them. But something that happens, we do not even know the order in which they, takes place, they, they take place and how they, how they work, how that machine begins developing, therefore, we do not know that we know them. However, miraculously, as a matter of, as miraculously, the result of this is that we speak language, right? Not only we speak language, we speak with full grammatical patterns. And we talked about this grammatical pattern yesterday, did we? The grammatical means? Acceptable. acceptable. Grammatical, grammatical means uh, well formed, well formed, acceptable and appropriate to, right? So, this, this really becomes a miraculous development that on the basis of the rules that are not so clear to us, even about development, we, we get an output which is miraculously well formed, grammatical, acceptable, appropriate. All right. Okay. Uh, so, uh, what what is important about learning this thing? Uh, what 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 does it tell us so far? Uh, if we understand acquisition, we get to know how we speak, how we begin to speak. We get to know how. Language is a complex phenomena and it is specific to humans. We get to know that there are differences between languages and language differences are taken care of, taken into account by set of principles and parameters. Okay? And <coughs> uh, this is the, the Second last part is something which we have not discussed so far, we just take it as it is right now, we will talk about this, which is how does language change takes place. Okay? Remember, uh, it is not, not really completely, completely obscure, should not be completely obscure for you, that if it is, if it is language continuum, right? Then Languages are two different at two different ends, right? But there are lots of similarities in between, right? Lots of similarities in between. Still, oh, hold on. Uh, li like I said, I will discuss this thing later, but just, just let me give you a brief thing about this. Have you heard anyone saying or have you realized that? there is a change in language after every 5 to 10 kilometers. Have you heard this thing? We, no, not, not heard. Have you witnessed this thing? It happens at language borders. It happens at language border in visible terms, right? For example, at the border of uh, um, Tamil and Telugu speaking areas, you are going to see this change. So, the kind of Tamil people speak at that border is going to be very different from Tamil spoken in Madurai, Coimbatore or for that matter at the borders of Malayalam. That is going to be different. So, differences at borders are clear. I am talking about even when there are not borders, after 20 kilometers you find people speaking a different kind of same language. And this does not, this is not a specific only to Tamil, it is it's true for all the languages. Not hurt this thing? It not style Whatever there you call that, style, uh, I, I do not want to give them names. As in uh, Kerala where they have three sets of As in Kerala where? They have uh, three sets of uh, Travancore, Madhya. That is just, that we are just talking about three sets, that is three broader distinctions. 
I, I want you to think about this thing and then tell me uh, late by later I mean not today talk to people and try to try to see if this has any meaning language changes not only in three diff, three major categories but they ch language changes after every every now and then every short distance okay people 20 kilometers from one place people will speak things differently okay and and such changes are very minor when they become major then they start becoming different languages now these are the changes which are responsible for larger changes in language okay so how they take place is also taken into account if we understand these things okay and then finally uh, language continuum and multilinguality which again we will address late, little later uh, is also taken care of by this pattern of acquisition wait 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 a minute it, it this is also important for you to understand more i'll i'll briefly mention this and then move to a uh, different concept most of the time when we talk about multilinguality what does it mean when we say multilinguals what does it mean to you different languages people are speaking how many languages more than one so and then what will be bilinguals those who speak two right now in the interest of time let me let me tell you this thing and uh, ask me a question if there are if if you do not agree with this thing and if you think we don't have clarity about it okay the the difference between the two terms bilinguals and multilinguals is nothing anyone who is a bilingual is also a multilingual okay so these two terms can be used interchangeably for a, for a long time people made people made these distinctions just for the sake of mathematical order monolinguals bilinguals and multilinguals when you look at it look at language carefully and just now what you have seen the process of learning language what is it that works as input then you can understand the term multilinguality with with greater clarity which is remember we just established yesterday that children are not learning bengali hindi tamil telugu what are they learning actually what are they learning that whatever is spoken to them whatever the input the child receives from the society and there is no society which speaks just one thing right therefore what happens is this generative capacity is again inbuilt with the capacity for multilinguality get 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 this point the fact that someone speaks more than one language is no additional capacity okay is 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 part of this generative apparatus it is following from the capacity to learn a language is following from generative mechanism and innateness hypothesis that people will be speaking more than one language that that's point number 1 point number 2 that everybody speaks more than one more than one language particularly when we look at language continuum at a micro level do you understand the distinction between macro and micro when we look at something when we look at language continuum at a micro level then we realize that people have capacity to negotiate between different varieties of same language also right there is a categorical distinction between uh, northern malayalam 
central Malayalam and Travancore Malayalam. But it's not that people speaking northern Malayalam will not be able to understand and talk to speakers of Travancore Malayalam. Get it? People speaking Hindi in Delhi will not be able to speak to people speaking Hindi in Kolkata. However, there are striking differences between the two. Now, what I want to underline is the following. The ability to negotiate between the varieties is also part of multilinguality. And this is the definition of multilingualism at a micro level. And this is why we, we claim and we say that every individual is a multilingual. When we say every individual is a multilingual, that does not mean everybody must know four or five languages that is Hindi, Punjabi, Tamil, Telugu, English. Even the capacity to negotiate between different regional varieties okay, is part of multilingual capacity is part of and, and that multilingual capacity in particular follows from generative apparatus. Is, is this point making sense to everybody? Therefore, multilinguality is important and therefore, we, we have mentioned here that this helps us understand the existence of multilinguality in real world. Okay? So, multilinguality in real world is no neither a big deal nor a strange phenomena. All right? Okay. Then we have been, we have looked at couple of more and very quickly we will look at few new concepts uh, from, from this. Did you, did I, did I mention comp competence and performance so far? I language and E language and the distinction between I language and E language is I language here, E language in the real world. Right? I language, the language of human mind, E language, the language of the real world that is external to human mind. Okay? <coughs> Excuse me. The distinction between competence and performance is exactly that. Competence refers to the capacity to generate language. The fact that generative capacity lies in human mind. So, when, whenever we talk about competence, we are actually talking about generative capacity. We are talking about I language, whereas performance is E language and capacity to use language in real world in real time. Get it? So, that is the distinction between competence and performance. Similarly, the two terms form and function, the distinction between the two terms form and function is exactly that. Form is about I language when we are looking at the internal properties of language, underlying patterns of language we mean form, we mean study of formal properties of language. When we talk about the use of language in actual world, we are talking about the function of language in the actual world. So, the terms like I language, E language, competence, performance, form, function with minor differences refer to exact same kind of dichotomy. Okay? All right. Then comes a point which is important for us to understand which is critical period hypothesis. This is the term which comes in the context of language acquisition, right? which simply means if, if a child receives input from immediate society and as a result of which we, we develop generative capacity and child continues speaking a language, for how long does this take place? Can I, does this happen to me? I, I have been receiving input in Tamil in Chennai, I have not been speaking Tam, Tamil, it is more than a year now. Uh, other than two, three words, nothing has developed. 
So, how do I believe this? And how does why why does it not happen to me? What is responsible for that? Get this question? Some of you may be non Tamil speakers, right? And you have been living here for much longer a period than I have been living. It has not happened to you. So, does it not raise a question to you? That if it is if if input from immediate environment is the only thing that is responsible for triggering universal grammar and developing generative capacity and in turn we speak the language, then why did why did it not happen in last four years for me? Because that ability is uh, very critical. So, what is uh, that ability is restricted to different stages, right? What is that stage? When does it stop? Whenever that stops is called critical period. Okay? Whenever that stops is called critical period. And those who studied these things gave it a name critical period hypothesis. So, so the assumption is again if we look at in terms of this. So, let us say 5, 10, 15 and 20 years of age. Okay? So, the idea is it starts from here and it stops around this place. Okay? That is around 13 to 14 years of age, it stops. I, I should use a more careful word, it is not that it stops, the access to universal grammar that is universal principles and parameters is open until this point. That is when we receive input, right? The universal the, that input does something to universal set of rules. The, the triggering can take place. After this, does this help you understand? After this, it is not fair to say it stops completely. What happens is the axis becomes weaker and weaker and weaker. That is the input is unable to trigger those rules. And if, even if they do, they do it in a very minimal way. Get it? If we say axis to universal rules stops, what will be the consequence of that? If we say access to universal rule completely stops, the consequence of that will be? We cannot learn any new word or we cannot learn any new language. However, there is enough evidence that we do learn some languages after 15 years also. Remember? You understand? We do learn some language. If we put some serious effort, we do learn some new languages and English is one such example. Right? Maybe for some people, they started learning English this side of the age group. Right? There are many people who have started learning after 14 or 15. Okay? Some people started learning this side. That is, let us say some people started learning English from this point. Some people may be even earlier. So, there are there are different kinds of variations when it comes to learning English and some other languages. Now, two points are critical here. If we say the access to universal grammar, access to universal rules or the capacity to capacity to universe, capacity to develop 
uh, sorry, the ability to develop generative capacity through triggering universal set of principles by external input from immediate society stops, then no new language comes, period. The fact that that does not happen, we can say it is still open, but it is weak. Therefore, the languages that we learn this side are really good, that is the, the capacity is reliable. What it that capacity gives us intuition and that intuition is authentic. So, when and that is the intuition which remains as original. The intuition that we develop after this capacity becoming weaker is not authentic intu intuition. We do learn and therefore, we, we do we feel less confident, less confidence in languages that we learn later on. Get this thing? Therefore, this when when the when it starts becoming weaker is called critical period. All right? Keep one more thing in mind that it is this is not a sudden break. It I, I have just drawn the sentence the line this way, it is not a sudden break. Probably it starts little early, right. So, it is not as weak, but nothing could be so sudden, abrupt. This starts happening little early, it may not happen, for some people it may happen all the way to 20. So, th these numbers are not very hard and fast, but wherever that stops is called critical period, the axis becomes weaker, not, does not stop completely and that is called critical period. The, is this clear? What, what we mean by critical period? And see there are consequences of these things. As you can see that consequences, we learn in new languages too. And if we say access is blocked, then we do not learn new language. Okay? All right. If we are learning languages on this side, then there is going to be impact or imprints of languages that we have learnt this side of the age on the new language. Therefore, if we learn English here, we are going to see lot of influence of languages from here on this and that is called mother tongue interference. Okay? Mother tongue interference. With this, I am bringing in a new term which is called mother tongue right? or native tongue or native language. What do we mean by that? What do we call mother tongue? What is mother tongue? Any idea quickly? Uh, usually the first major language we learn is called the mother Which is first major language is? The languages that we have been learning in critical period. And again, remember this could be, there is a strong possibility, rather very, very strong possibility that 0 to 10, the number of languages may be more than 1, right? Definitely more than 1. In that case, what is the mother tongue? Theoretically, if we understand this, this acquisition process in a theoretical term, then it should not be difficult for you to answer with, to full, with total conviction. What will be the mother tongue? You are right. You, you are absolutely right. The language that we learned this side. So, I am asking you, if we learnt more than one, then what is the mother tongue among them? All of them. That is right. The, the language that immediate society speaks. And if there are more than one languages in that, then all of them. The, therefore, no one else decides about your mother tongue. No one else decides, oh, you speak Telugu, your mother tongue is Telugu. That is not, that's not how mother tongue is decided. Mother tongue 
is something very specific and technical in its term that mother tongue is the language or languages that we learnt on this site. Get it? Mother tongue is also the term which we use for the, the one term I already gave you which is native language. Mother term is also the term for first language and this is little bit strange uh, that you will find here. When we say first language, right? first language by definition means how many? One. But if you understand the process of language acquisition, first language could be more than one or many. So, it is only the only in, ter, in the context of language acquisition, the, the term does not mean much. It is the only time when we say when we can say first language is not a good term, it could be possibly first languages, right. And based on these understandings, we can say in the larger context that we are talking about really language, not in not instances of language. So, when, whenever we talk about first languages, we are talking about many languages, languages together. But actually we are talking about language and anything that we acquired before this, all of them are first language or first languages, mother tongue, native tongue and you decide what you learnt this site. No one else decides. Get it? And if, if acquisition of all the languages of the world takes place this way, then now you can appreciate it in a letter in a little bit better, better sense that what could be the difference between language and dialect. If we are talking about different varieties of Malayalam and Tamil, they are all learned the same way. If we are talking about different names of, dif names of different languages, they are, we, we learn all of them the same way. If we understand universal set of principles and parameters, the, the abstract rules of what we call languages or what we call dialects are all here and they get triggered in the same way. Then in a real technical sense, there is absolutely no distinction between language and dialect. So, when we say language and dialect distinction is really socio-political, we are not trying to be politically correct. We are, we are talking about what follows from the principles of language acquisition. Therefore, no distinction between them. Get it? All right. Are we, are we clear about mother tongue, first language, critical period, right? These, these are way too fundamental things and a clarity is required and this clarity comes when we understand generative foundation of language acquisition without names or without any language. There, there, there could be no confusion in this. Just two more terms and then we stop for today. If we know about first language, then there is a term which is called second language, right? Second language by definition will be where? Here, on this side, right? And there is one more thing specific for second language is because it happens here on this side and because the axis is broken, right? So, there is one more thing specific for second language which is instruction. So, if I say I, I know English as second language, what I am essentially also saying that I have received instruction in English too, okay? However, no instruction is required this side. That is no, you, we understand the meaning of instruction, a formal instruction in a formal setting in classroom with the help of books and other, other materials, all right? So, that is about second language. Second language is the language which we acquire probably beyond critical period and with instruction, it is called second language. Without instruction, before 10 years or 12 years of age, all of them are first language, all right? Then there is a term called foreign language, right? There is a term called foreign language. What is that foreign language? Very minimal exposure to it and most of the learning is that we have formal sources. 
most of the learning is done in a formal setting true and minimal by minimal exposure what do we mean minimal exposure very true but why exactly foreign language very nice a foreign language is not the language which we decide according to national boundaries as you have seen if one thing you can see underlyingly being discussed that there is no concept of boundary walls in languages language boundaries are so porous so we are not talking about languages of political geography we are saying this term foreign language simply means the language where of course we get instruction so that way foreign language and second language are the same thing as far as instruction is concerned but the distinction between foreign language and second language is in terms of its accessibility and availability in the society for second language we get instruction as well as it's available in the society too for foreign language it's not available in society and on the basis of this distinction anything could be a second language or any language could be foreign language depending upon which place we are talking about so a manipuri or assamese could be a foreign language in chennai at the same time tamil could be foreign language in himachal pradesh or up get it so these terms are technically defined in terms of first language second language and foreign language not in according to political boundaries all right one more point to clarify which is often asked you haven't asked so far what happens to languages that we start what what happens to languages that we start here and then we lose lose later that is we we don't speak after couple of years i started speaking tamil didn't speak after couple of years that is 3 4 years okay what will happen to that language think about this time is over we'll we'll talk about this and talk about sounds tomorrow thank you